start the music even though I thought I was ready um <laughs> it's not working it's not working <laughs> what no no there we go I hear it okay I was okay well all right we'll cut that part out um <laughs> so welcome to blades and blasters this is the first episode of a campaign called hourglass and it is a, how to describe it? It is a kind of a multi-genre, multi-setting campaign where certain characters get uh, swept up in a large plot across multi-dimensions, multi-universes, and multi-time uh, frames. And uh, today we are in a... Um, setting uh the world is to be determined what the name of it is but the uh actual city is called uh capocha and if you're thinking of something that would be similar to capocha uh, think of the venetian renaissance uh only uh with fantasy races um although the town of uh tarani is mostly human with some elves um, for the most part um, so with me today for this session it's a solo session for Emma playing Lesha I think that's how I pronounce it and Alicia, Alicia. and um, she uh, is going to introduce her character momentarily after I go through just a little bit of an intro um, so uh, on the streets of Tarani the days are hard, the nights are hard. There is no... There is no coin, there is not enough to feed the people. There is the poor, and there is the poor. And maybe there are those that are wealthy enough that you do not see, you do not ever know here in the streets, the dark streets of Tarani. And Lassie is one of those. And here on the streets, money talks, and there are many gang members, and uh, one of those is Gianni Cantinano, and he is, uh, this is his abode that we look at here, and he hires young girls and young boys to pickpocket from others and bring the spoils to him. And those that do not follow his way, they meet a unsavory end, usually. And that is why these two girls, Teresa and Lesia, are here today, uh, waiting for a meeting with Gianni. And Gianni will hopefully be very pleased with what they've come back from on the streets. And uh, I will let uh, Emma now give her a small intro for her character. A young woman in ragged clothing sits in a room waiting to meet with Gianni, pressing a dagger anxiously against her fingertips. She looks absent-minded and isn't reacting to the pricks being made in her skin. Things haven't been going well for me ever since I was released from the prisons. Things weren't really going well for me before I went to the prisons either. My father had tried to raise me to be a hard and honest worker. He earned pocket change every night performing his songs at Pietro's Tavern until the day he stopped being able to use his fingers. It wasn't long before he started having a difficult time using other parts of his body as well. 
The cleric said he had a rare disease that would eventually render him unable to move or speak, and then he would just die. They could cure it, of course, but not for free, and we had no money. I tried to save what I could from the coins I found in the streets and people's loose pockets, but my father died two years later. Once he died, I tried to live honestly, like he wanted me to. But living honestly for a young girl in poverty isn't easy. I was caught taking a little extra from Pietro's patrons, and then was thrown in a cell. Now that I'm out, I'm working for Signor Gianni's interests whenever he needs me to survive. But now, I'm starting to not be able to feel the tips of my fingers, like my father used to describe. She stops pricking with her knife, standing up, looking towards the rest of the room, and looking towards her friend, Teresa. What do you think is taking so long? Tet, you there? Crap, sorry. Um, <laughs> I was muted. Um, she says, Oh, I don't know. He always has big plans, meetings with this one and that one. Uh, please don't stab yourself like that. It always puts me off. Makes me squeamish. You know I don't like the sight of blood. Sorry, sorry. She kind of like wipes her fingers and puts her knife uh, on her belt. I'm just... I always get the nervous before I meet Gianni. Oh, we have brought him many coins. He should be most happy. This is more than we brought the last time. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm sure he'll be happy with us. Um, how have you been doing lately? You haven't been caught or anything, have you? I, well, now that you mentioned it, I was caught, but... Well, I talked my way out of it, as usual. Uh, you know, gave them the sub story until I could run. <laughs> Smart. I'm glad you learned that trick from me. Well, I'll always say I learned from the best. Well, hopefully you'll be better than I, and you won't spend any time in the jails. Well, you had no one to teach you. I will be mostly trained by the time I grow to the age of where you were caught. You were figuring this out on, on your own. This is true. You'll be a bright star one day, I promise you. Oh, maybe one day I will find such a score that I do not need to pick the pockets of wealthy gentlemen or ladies walking by and we can settle down. Yes, and then maybe we'll have some poor saps like us trying to pick our pockets. Maybe we could take over for Gianni. Now that's an idea. Never considered that. Well, he... Look at this place, it is quite nice, is it not? Compared to the hovers where I used to live, that I remember at least. She scratches her head, kind of seems a bit, uh, maybe confused, unsure of what she actually remembers. Are you having trouble remembering again? Ah, oh, it's just, you know what they say, when you think so far back when you're a child, you do not remember exactly, yes, I barely remember my mother and father, or my, yes, my mother and father, I, uh, I do not know, I just, I, I remember it being similar to this, but I remember, uh, I want to, I want to say there was, like, she kind of goes over to, like, this wall and pats it, so, like, where this would be, there would be uh, a gold placard, but uh, perhaps it is just my dreams. Lassia's eyes widen a bit. Gold? That was quite the lavish lifestyle you led. Oh, I think it was just my dream, as I said. 
you know, always dreaming for the stars, always dreaming for the wealth that we do not have. This is true. I've had dreams like that before. Well, hopefully sometime our dreams will become reality, eh? Yes. She kind of smiles. Um, she looks around and begins just kind of listening, wondering, like, how much longer Gianni will be. Yeah, in the adjoining room, there's no... Um, there's kind of, like, the, the beads over the the doorways there's no actual doors that close um so you can hear him talking to someone kind of on the other side of the uh building down the hallway uh and you hear just kind of a, a kind of a bang on a table as someone slams their hand and you see a man he kind of walks towards you and he gives you a, just a very passing glance and kind of cuts to the outside and leaves and as that happens, you see Gianni kind of look around the corner and he gives you a wave um, with his uh, sausage fingers. Um, he wears, um, he's kind of a plump fellow. Um, you get the impression that once he probably was quite a, um impressive figure. Uh, he's tall, he's broad of shoulders, but his uh, coat and his shirt are probably at least two sizes too small and likely this is because of you know inaction you know uh, age he's probably middle-aged uh, from what you can gather maybe in his 40s he sometimes okay. wears an eye patch um, and uh, but you know for a fact that uh, his eye is completely fine under the eye patch so it's not really a you don't really know why he wears one it's currently down right now um, over his eye and he gives you kind of a flourish and to tell you to enter. Uh, Lysia will begin to walk by him as she bows to greet him. Senor Gianni, is everything all right with that other man? Oh, nothing you should worry about. Come in, come in. Show me what you have for me. Show me what you have for me. Yes, of course. Um, Teresa, I believe you have the bag. Teresa gives a small bow and walks over and places the sack of coins on the table. Uh, Gianni kind of rubs his chin and he gives kind of a nod. Hmm, very good. And he opens it and looks inside. Ah, very good. You two are becoming quite the team. We very much do our best. Um, I'm glad it pleases you. Yes, yes, come. Have some wine and some olives and grapes. And he waves and there's a pitcher of wine on the table with a couple cups and uh, grapes and olives. Um, this is kind of like his thing. He treats you to some good, well, good for you, wine uh, and uh, some food. You are very gracious. Thank you. And Alicia will grab a glass of wine and a few great grapes and start snacking. I am very gracious, and I not. Do you enjoy working for me? Of course. Wonderful, wonderful. I may have larger things for you to come. I think you both are ready for more lucrative investments. You see, uh, smiles at Teresa at that, um, notion. Of Teresa course, smiles anything, as well. Anything you'd need from us? Was there anything pressing? Oh, I would think about it. And he digs into the, digs into the pouch and finds a couple, uh, silver pieces each and slides them over to you, which, you know, has to be something like, uh, one one hundredth of the total that you have gotten. And he gives that to you. You keep this safe. Uh, you will store it away and uh, you invest it. You keep it for a rainy day. You hear me? Yes. Yes, of course. And Alicia will grab the coins from the table. Um, Teresa says something. Teresa, huh? Yeah, she, she takes... Ah, oh, 
But I want to buy this dress. And Tiani kind of shakes his head. Oh, that will not do. You do not need a dress in the slums. Once you are out of the slums, you can buy better dresses than you can buy now with that pittance of a coin. And he kind of sits back on this wooden high back chair and it creaks under his weight. So, what will you do with the rest of your day then, girls? Nisia's just kind of like playing with the coin in her fingers. I think I may simply just go back, find a place to stash this coin while I can. Um, other than that, maybe try to teach Talisa a few things. Ah, oh, well, it is good that you have taken the girl under your wings. I do appreciate it. As I say, you work well together, so it suits me just fine. Of course, anything we can do to be of better service to you. Of course. Um, as you're, you know, winding down your conversation, he, he kind of sits there and waits patiently, but you get the sense that he wants you to kind of get out of the room as you're drinking your wine and things, but as you're kind of sitting there, the man that had uh, left uh, re-emerges and he says, Diani, they're here, and he says, ah, all right, girls, uh, there's a back room back there, are you absconded back there and wait until this uh, meeting is over? Maybe perhaps you can listen to some things and learn some things anyway. Yes, yes, of course. Um, please excuse us. And Licia will grab Teresa's hand and lead her to this back room, um, doing her best to hide. Yeah. You head back to the back room and, uh, Teresa, Teresa, what do you think is happening? I'm not sure. Um, the man didn't seem happy before, but are he and Gianni working together? Oh, that man I have not seen before, I do not know. But it is not like Gianni to let a man that he did not trust walk around his uh, villa. This is true. Um, we just need to listen closely. Oh, okay. She kinda... Perhaps, as he said, we might learn something. Something useful. Yes, maybe, maybe. And she kind of scooches up to where the door would be and kind of over exaggeratedly puts her ear to the opening. And uh, as, as you are listening, um, you hear kind of like an argument about, um, you're pretty sure they're arguing about something, some sort of turf and uh, what was their turf and what, it, you're thinking they're talking about borders of some sort. And it's going on for a couple minutes, and it's getting to the point where you can't really follow the details of it. They're talking about cross streets and um, who owes who money, and they're talking about specific things that have happened in the past that you're unaware of. So some of those things are just kind of beyond you. And then all of a sudden you hear, bam, uh, a shot from a uh, musket pistol, flintlock pistol, just ring out. And Teresa goes, oh no, and just kind of screams out. Lysia <laughs> quickly tries to quiet Teresa. Um, does she feel that they were heard? Probably. Um. Well, she le she yelled out pretty loud. Yeah, Lysia's going to grab her dagger just in case. Um slightly pushing open the door to look outside to see what had happened and what might be coming. Yeah, this room is kind of, um, if you look like towards where you are, uh, you know, like as the viewer, there that's where kind of Gianni is. So, And then that door to your left is valid too. There's a door outside. Um, when you look in, you just see nothing but kind of smoke filling the room. Uh, from what you know is a shot of a flint rock pistol and you kind of see some you hear a good thud as somebody falls over and you hear somebody there's someone back there let's get them 
and uh, you hear the ruffling of uh, feet over the um, the floor coming in your direction at the very least. But it's hard to see anything specifically. Yeah. Teresa, we need to run as soon as we can. Um, the, I'll into try the streets? To an opening. Yes, of course. She, I, I won't leave you. I'll be right behind you. Please, just wait for me to get their attention. And um, Nisi is going to push Teresa back away from the door. And then um, we'll pop out to try to like meet the people who are coming and maybe catch them a little unawares. Do you want to do you want to give me a stealth roll with uh, maybe two benefits because of the smoke? Yeah, sure. Sounds great. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see. You should have buttons off your token, or you can roll it from your sheet. Should be the same either way. Whatever you find more easy to access. Yeah. Uh, so that that would be to so I'm kind of gonna go over some of the systematic stuff just since it's your first time playing. So typically yeah. in, in PL1 games, uh, the difficulty scales based if it's a PL1 game or a PL2 game or PL whatever. And so uh, PL1 game, there's no like average checks. Any any check you make is considered challenging. So when I'll say challenging, difficult, desperate, those are usually the, the three. Uh, in PL1, challenging is a 14 target number. So I would say this is a challenging check. You rolled a 15, so you'd pass. So as you are waiting kind of off to the side, just kind of ready to jump out um, as somebody comes forward, right next to you stands a uh, man and you can see he's got a rapier in one hand and a gun in the other uh, he doesn't seem to see you even though you're probably three or four feet away to his side okay yeah um, as he gets closer I want to try to stab him okay let's uh, let's switch into initiative um, let's do this Switch over here. Um, so because you're getting ambush, um, you would get a. Um, uh, let's see. Give yourself uh, two benefits on your initiative roll. Let me make sure it's clear. I don't know why it wouldn't be yet. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so two benefits. Yep. Said? Two benefits sounds good. Okay. Am I trained in initiative? How would I know that? Uh, it's your reactions. I, that's one thing I got to change about the sheet um, to make it obvious that, or or your buttons at least. I'll tell you in two seconds though. You are okay. Trained. Cool. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So you have a bunch of exploding dice there. Three of your dice exploded. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. I'm good at initiative. <laughs> That's good. That is good. Okay. So this system uses a uh, hex grid or a uh, kind of a unit system. Um, I'll just say you guys are like right there just for sake of ease. All right. Um, so let me just roll his. Let me see if he's... I think he probably is. Yeah. All right. Um, so, um, the way combat works is very different from any round based combat there's no rounds so um, you will spend action points to do your actions um, this uh, they're they're all in the quick start guide there's there's quite a few of them um, 
there are things uh the ap is the big thing right it costs more money or more ap to do certain things and the way initiative works is whoever has the lowest ap goes even if you've just went so you, if if somebody does a big action that takes a big long time and you do a couple actions that are very quick then you're still good you could go back to back to back to back potentially um, okay so um, standard attack costs three actions. That's just attacking normally. There's cautious attacks. There's reckless attacks. There's uh, a lot of different things. Um, if you give me some sort of, since this is our first time playing, if you give me just an idea of kind of what you want to do, I can kind of convert it into an action and tell you kind of how that works instead of you actually looking up the action and figuring out exactly kind of what you're looking for, if that makes sense. Yeah, so Lesia was probably gonna try to stab him in the arm with the gun okay um and then try to get teresa to run by and then maybe run after her are you is your attempt to disarm him or is it just to injure him um probably disarm okay so there is a disarm action um okay so let me find it Offensive disarm. So this costs four AP. What you'll do is you'll make an attack with one hardship, um, and then he's going to make a defense roll. And if you're successful, you will disarm him. Okay. Is it any kind of attack, or is it like hand to hand? Um, let's see. Actually, hold on. Let me. Read. So the attacker must attack the armed with a weapon. It's called a called shot to the arm, which causes one hardship in addition to one hardship targeting the arm. Add another hardship. So it's going to be two hardships. So okay. um, it's just it's your attack with your weapon. Okay. So it's just your normal weapon attack. So if you go into combat, I, mean, I just clicked it for you. Oh, yours isn't set up. Mm, hold on. I have it on my character sheet, though. Yeah, it would be with a small blade. Yeah, just do a small blade attack, and we'll work. We'll work through it. That's fine. Okay. And uh, it's zero benefit to hardship. Yep. So what you can do, though, there's things you can do. Uh, you can spend fate points uh, to. Um, spending a fate point would give you an extra benefit to your attack. That's uh, so when you spend, you get them back after the end of session. If you burn one, you lose them forever. But they do significant things. But okay, um, I will spend one. Okay. Um, to get an additional benefit. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Seventeen. Okay, so that beats his uh, base defense, um, which you've been hearing a lot about base defense from Aki lately. So it beats yeah. his it beats his base defense. So he's probably going to defend a seven. A seven would give him an injury, so he's going to try to defend. So what I'll do is uh, that was a four AP action. Do you see the green bubble on yourself? I don't see him for some reason. Let's see. On myself? Yeah. Oh, like when I click on my token. Or yeah. just, yeah. Okay, it's visible to everyone, so it should be... Let's see, I don't see it for some reason. It's odd. Um, and then he's going to try to defend, so that gives one. Do you see his green bubble? It's important that you uh, be able, you're able to see it. So. No. Okay, it says C. That's why. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right, so... Okay, so can you see it now? Um, I can't see his, though. <clears throat> I can see a blue and red bar for myself, though. You can't see his green bar, though? Mm-mm. All right, let me figure out what's wrong. Because it's very important that you can see other people's AP values. Um, and... The macro I have just does not seem to want to work at this. Visible to everyone. Bar one is AP. If you cl hmm, give me one sec.
And you don't see your, your own either, right? No. It's weird. Give me just like a couple minutes to try to figure out what's wrong here. If, if I can't figure it out, it's fine, but... Yeah. I think if you go, like, I'm sure you know this already, but if you click on the token itself and go to the settings... Yeah, I'm in the advanced okay. and I'm doing like bar 1C and uh, visible to everyone and it's not... Hmm. Um, weird. It's weird because I'm not... I, I can see when I'm a click on them, obviously, but I don't see them as a bar above your head either. Yeah. Yours is acting very strange. Um, I see it for the other two, like like the red and the blue. Yeah, red. there's not really... It's weird that it's not showing for green. Like, the green says visible to everyone, right? Do you see his um, red and blue? No. Okay, that's that's good, but... His says visible to everyone. I just don't see this is not popping up. Hold on, let me do this one. You know what I think is wrong? I think my scripts have crashed. Why that would really matter, but no. And you don't see your own green either, right? No. <laughs> what the hell? This is visible to everyone. Do you see it now? I see mine. Yeah. Oh, now I see his. It's weird. It's, um... Okay, I don't understand why that matters, but okay. I had to put the max as zero. I don't... Oh, I don't, that's weird. Yeah, I don't understand. Anyway, uh, he tried... Okay, so you attacked. Uh, you get a, um, a 17. So he spends one AP to try to uh, parry with his rapier. Um, uh, so that's a defensive weapon. So defensive weapons get one benefit to defensive actions. Does he have, like, oh. What's that? What's the question? Uh, I was going to say, does he have, like, a hardship or anything because he was ambushed? Or, like, how does that work? So, if he's surprised, let me actually look. There's surprised rules. That's not Yeah, it's all just about initiative, really. Um, okay. So you attack. Uh, he is able to parry it with his rapier. Um, he is... Um, so now you have AP4 and he has AP1. So he is going to aim twice, which will put him at AP3. 
Uh, and since his AP is still below yours, he's going to attack because uh, he can because he goes first. And that'll put him at AP 6. And so he's going to try to stab you with the rapier. And let's see what he rolls. A 31. Oh, fuck. So you can dodge or parry. Um, I think I have a skill in dodge, so I'll probably dodge. Yeah, I'll dodge. Okay. Um, no benefits, no hardships. Nope. Cool. Dodge will put you up to 5 AP. So that's a pretty good dodge. He hits you. Uh, so what happens is, uh, what we do is the first thing I subtract the uh, the uh, the defense from the offense, and if it is a remainder of zero or higher, it hits. So he does hit of two. Then you add his rapier damage of six. Uh, do you have any armor on your yes. left leg? Yes. What is the piercing okay. for it? two okay so this weapon has piercing so that lowers that to one so it takes one off that so I like to always keep a pencil handy for this so 31 minus 29 equals 2 plus the damage which is 4 equals 6 minus uh, your armor is 1 so that would be five, and that is not enough to hurt you. Uh, actually, it's just an oh, but minus three because he hits you in the left leg. So um, another minus three, that's two. So basically, what he does is he does one of these things with the rapier: is he swats your um, your knife aside and kind of gives a lunge down towards your leg, and it just barely cuts you, and you don't even feel it. Now, you you do, in the heat of the battle, maybe you don't know why, but it doesn't really do anything to you. It's not enough to hurt you. Okay. And you are up. Okay. Um, I'm going to yell at Teresa to run, and then I'm going to try to stab him. Okay. Teresa does start to run up this way a bit. So if you want to do just a standard attack, it's uh, 3 AP to do so. You can do a rushed attack, which... Spends 2 AP, but you get a hardship, or you can do a reckless attack, which you get 3 benefits, but your defenses are severely uh, impaired your next attack, or the next time they attack you, so. Um, I think I'll do s s quick. Okay, so quick, you're going to get a hardship, but you go in 2 AP, so that'll put you at 7. He'll still go before you, but. Okay. So... Small blades, no benefit, one hardship. Uh, let me make sure it's a no hardship one. Uh, rushed attack, I'm pretty sure it is. But let me make sure. Rushed attack. Yeah, one hardship. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. Nice. Heck yeah. Nice. Thank you, Exploding Dice. Yeah, he's going to try to defend it, so that raises him up to 7. So when there's a tie, just so you know, in AP, what happens is is the person who rolled the highest initiative goes first, and that would be you. Um, I removed him from the board when I was trying to troubleshoot that, but okay, that's fine. Um, so he's going to try to defend. He spends 1 AP to do so. He's going to use his rapier. Rapiers get one benefit. Rapiers, rapiers get one benefit, and he's trained. Twenty-eight. So that's uh, that is twelve to start, and you hit him in the head. Looks like so twelve. He has no armor, so twelve plus five, and the small blades. Uh, are you slashing or piercing? I don't think it matters. I think they're probably the same at two, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, nineteen. Yeah. We'll say slashing. Yeah. Okay. So, so you hit him for nineteen. So, just so you know how I calculated it, you rolled a forty. He rolled a twelve. That's, or I'm sorry, he rolled a twenty-eight. That's twelve. You add your four. That's sixteen. Um, then you add your uh, five. That's uh, wait. Hold on. I'm confused. 
So <laughs> 12 plus 5 for the head strike plus 4. Yeah, that should be it. Um, so that that is 19. Yeah. And so 19 is above his wound threshold. So go ahead and describe how you kill him because he's a minion. Minions die, oh, minions die immediately when they're hit above their wound level. So. Yeah, I don't think... Lysia was even intentionally trying to kill him, um, but as he stabs at her, she panics and just slashes towards his head and catches him in the throat, um, and he starts spraying out blood as she turns to run and catch up to Teresa. Yeah, he just, you cut him across the throat, the blood just spurts all over you and pretty much everything. You see Teresa kind of running and she's looking and she just screams, oh my gosh! And uh, he just crumples and you hear someone coming out through the through the uh, um, building as you kind of rush off. Teresa, what did you do? What did you do? It's okay. We We need to hurry. Come, follow me. And I'll grab her hand and just start running down the streets. Okay, let me, uh, you rolled pretty well there. Alright, let's get you guys over to this one, probably, yeah. Uh, you run out into the streets, kind of in the alleyways uh, nearby. Um, you're able to dodge this way and that, and for a moment you think you have an, at least a, a little break. Three says, I have to, I have to rest. I, I'm so out of breath. Oh, what happened back there? You killed that man. I've never seen such skillful blade work. I, I was just trying to injure him so we could get away. Um... I'll try to, like, find a place for us to kind of duck, like, into or behind. Yeah, why don't, just why don't so you give me, like, a like a, uh, a stealth roll would be good, probably. Okay. Challenging good. stealth roll. And I'll give you, actually, a benefit because you know this area so well. Okay. Um, to screw myself over, mm -hmm. should I have a hardship because I'm covered in blood? Maybe drawing attention to myself. No, I would. I would think that's not that big of a deal in this area. It's not... Okay, sounds good. Yeah, you easily find a very, very uh, hidden place. This would be a difficult roll if you had to. Uh, difficult uh, TN21. So you're able to find a little nook uh, in one of the alleyways in this part of the city, uh, kind of shrouded in darkness. I would say it's probably. Um, you know, late afternoon, and it's uh, it's probably winter time or close to winter time, and uh, it is growing dark already, and you're able to easily find a place to hide. Okay. Um, as we're hiding, Lysia is just looking Teresa over. Are you okay? Were you hurt? But I, yes, I'm fine. I was not injured. There was no uh, assailant near me. Are you okay? He, 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 I saw him stab you in the leg, and she kind of reaches down and sticks her finger in the hole that the uh, the rapier uh, made in your pants. It's it's fine. I'm fine. Don't worry. Um, thank the gods you're all right. Uh, did you happen to see anything? Was Gianni okay? Uh, I did not see. I could not see. There was nothing but smoke and then... and then they came towards us and we ran. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I saw nothing. It's okay. It's okay. Um, we will, we will figure this out. We will go back to Gianni later. Um, try to learn what happened. But right now, it is well enough that we are safe. Yes, I, I agree. And as as she's saying that, you see a couple of men dash uh, down the street um, past you. Um, you want to give me a lore check? Okay. I don't think I'm trained in this, so we'll see how it goes. And then the trained versus untrained just means you don't explode, really. Yeah. Okay. 
No, you didn't. You're looking that you, nothing on them, like tells you who they are or anything. No recognition. You just know that they're dressed similar and they're acting strangely, like they're chasing someone. But you can't identify them necessarily as they run past. Oh, they did not see us. We are very lucky. I, you are skillful with your blade, but I do not know how many of them we can handle. Yes, I do not wish to try. Um, Should we leave the know, city? I... Get a boat, maybe. Where would we go? <sighs> uh, to the villas outside of the city, at least for now, maybe. Uh, I I had a cousin once that uh, lived outside the city, I, I believe. Uh, I haven't seen them in some time, but perhaps we could stay there for a while. And Alicia's kind of like looking around the corner trying to gauge if it's safe. I think I think that's a good idea. Um Do you have any or I guess we do have money now for a ship. Uh, we have um, uh, we have some. What uh what Yanni gave us, uh, do you think that it would be enough? We can only hope um Come, we we need to hurry before they come back. Yes, uh, let's let us find a a boat. And um, so so just kind of uh, the this city is kind of like Venice. So there's like all these water channels through, and there's these pole boats that you can take out of the city. Um, as you're kind of you're gonna look for one of these, I'm assuming. Yeah, are the pole boats just for traversing through the city? Or they, they will go out. They will go out them? just a little bit, um, and then some some boatswains. That's what they're called. They're usually elves. They're like essentially okay. water elves that uh, do all the uh, the traversing through the through the waterways. Uh, that's kind of what they do. Um, no one really knows them or understands them very well, but they're these. Um, these kind of uh, alien-looking uh, blue elves, and uh, they will take you out of the city. You have probably not been out of the city, maybe ever. It's up to you to yeah. decide. But um, yeah, I think that fits. yeah um, they will take you. Uh, they'll, they'll do the pole boats uh, through the city, and then once they get out of sight, they'll just they transfer over to a different small like canoe, essentially. That's what you've heard, at least. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah, I'm gonna be looking for one of these elves then. Yeah, it's not hard to find. Um, you head down, kind of, you're on um, some streets away from the water, um, but you head in that direction and you see a elf um, seated next in his boat, basically, or her boat. It's hard, very hard to tell what their gender are, uh, and it looks up and kind of looks at you with these pale white-ish eyes um, doesn't really say anything not expecting you to try to charter its boat um, Licia does her best to hold its gaze uh, and pulls out her coin can can this get us out of the city she looks at your silver and shakes her head a bit Ah, that is not enough, child. I am sorry. My services... How much? Uh, how much do you have? You appear to be quite in a hurry. Are you in trouble? Um... Yes. Some men attacked us, and it was the best we could do to get away. Now we're just trying to find somewhere safe away from them. Oh, well, I am sorry, child, but human affairs are none of my business. And uh, if you want to continue to convince her, you can make a, I would say, um, a persuasion roll. And okay. uh, with the money combined, Teresa basically, you can have all my money, all my money. Um, I would give you a benefit for the roll. Okay. Just got it. Um, so you needed a 14. Uh, the boatswain... <sighs> Fine. Come on. Give me your coins. I will take you. 
You will know my name by the end of this, and you will owe me a favor, I think. That... that sounds fine. And Lysia is just kind of looking over her shoulder, making sure that those men haven't found them or aren't nearby. Yeah, as the boat's... you get on the, the paddle boat, and the boat swain puts the pole in the water and pushes off, and you kind of... Uh, it's kind of strange. You've probably been on the water but not like on one of these boats and it just goes kind of unnaturally fast as um the elf is pushing the pole boat down the water and uh the elf is able to cut these corners and the canals like just crazy as if they were running um or walking around a corner just knows exactly where to put the pole it turns the whole boat you just kind of go in that direction and uh, you're before you know it, you're on the other side of the city, and the elf turns and, well, I think you are safe from any immediate harm. So this is still in the city. You're still in the city, the but you're pretty time. far away at this point. Okay. It's a pretty big city. Um, yeah. What? Would it be possible to get out to the villas? Oh, it is possible. I will take you there, depending how far you want to go. Um, Teresa, do you have any idea? Oh, yes, I believe it is... Uh, and she gives general directions, uh, which, which river to take, and the boatswain nods, I can take you there. What you've given me is fine, I suppose. What are your names? My name is Licia. And this is Teresa. She um, nods. What is yours? Ah. Tamiela. Of the boat people. It is a pleasure, Tamiela. Hmm. It is not often I have such pleasant conversation with your kind. Typically it is, take me here, take me there, here's a coin. Not true desire to help someone besides ferry them about. That is my days, my toils as a boatswain. Well, you... Help save us, so you are a friend now. Am I? I did not know my kind and your kind could be friends. In my world, um, you take the friends you can get. <laughs> she kind of grunts just a bit. Um... And you notice, kind of as you're standing there, the elf is extremely tall, um, at least 6'6", six, six, uh, compared to you, like very broad, sh muscular shoulders. But uh, as you're close, uh, she, she's clearly, you know, used to just, you know, doing this pole boat all day long, and uh, it, it really shows. Uh, and you've never really seen one of these elves up close. You see them in the distance, kind of standing by their pole boats or sitting in their pole boats, kind of whisking people away. And it's, they have this kind of ethereal kind of look to their faces. Their eyes have no pupils. They're white. Their faces are pale blue, and their hair is a darkish blue, almost silver in some aspects. Um, and uh, she... Well, I will take the friends that I can get, I suppose, but tell me, why were you running? Who was trying to harm you? Well, um, we were at the man's house, and he had visitors, so we hid in the back room. Um, we heard a gunshot. And then the men begin to descend upon us. We were able to fight one off and then run, but the others were 
chasing us. Teresa blurts out, She killed him! She was able to defend us and kill him! And the elf smiles a bit. Ah, is it your first time you drew blood? Um, yes, of someone else's. How did it feel to you? It felt necessary. Um, I. I don't believe I have any I had to do what I had to do and I am grateful to be alive still In the old days we fought as well before we took this oath of peace and service I have drawn blood and killed others as you have I know how to use it will dull in time. The pain, the confusion of it all. It will be fine, girl. Thank you. It's, it was remarkable how easy it was to take something so important. Ah, yes, it is. The most important thing a man or woman can have, their life. And you can take it just like you can take a coin out of their pocket, I imagine. Hmm. Uh, yes, I suppose so. Um, tell me, why... I imagine my character doesn't know much history. Um, Probably but, ignorant to it, yeah. Yeah. Why did your people sign a treaty of peace and servitude? Why are you stuck doing this? For our warlike ways in the past. <sighs> Well, I will give you the brief history, I suppose. Once long ago, our kind... Um, we ruled these lands. We were the dominant peoples. And we warred with ourselves and others. Your kind, humans, and others, dwarves, <laughs> and others, creatures of intelligence, and we... Uh, as you experienced the blood today in your first kill, I had my hundredth kill by the time I was your age. War, it was all we knew. And eventually we saw the error of our ways and instead of destroying the humans, we decided that we would put down our weapons and atone for our past mistakes of our youth. We are an older race now, and these simple pleasures on the water, going this way and that way, and especially if we can find some like you that would speak to us, this is preferable to any deeds where we might draw blood, but I cannot fault you in yours. She shrugs as she pushes the pole boat along and you kind of cut through this alleyway, this channel, and you kind of see the most of the city rise behind you and these uh, lights kind of illuminating the dark sky as you push out away from, uh, from Tarani, Capocha, I should say. Thank you for telling me your story. How old are you, if you don't mind my asking? Oh, I am young. I am only uh, 380 years old. It will be my birthday in two days. <laughs> Nisi is kind of shocked by the number and the fact that that's considered young. 
that is incredible that you live such long lives. Um, it was not always so thing. when we killed each other. What were you saying? Sorry. Oh, she said happy birthday. Oh, oh thank you. Perhaps I will uh, ask someone to bring me a pastry, huh? A cannoli, maybe. <laughs> that sounds nice. Be a good birthday present. Well, with what you have paid me, I can perhaps buy one. Do you buy things for yourself often? Oh, yes. Uh, although we do come into a life of servitude, uh, we still enjoy things. Uh, I must say that uh, my cuisine has fallen to more of the human side these days. Life in the city, as it is. And cannolis are quite good. They are delicious. I've only had one or two in my lifetime. Well, while well, you're going into the fields and the vineyards, they will not have cannolis, I don't think. No, but perhaps they have something better. Safety. Indeed. Well, let us get you there. And, uh, she smiles and as you kind of head out of the city, um, eventually maybe you fall asleep as the night passes and uh, sometime in the early hours, uh, Tamelia uh, switches you over to a uh, canoe-like uh, boat instead of a paddle boat, and uh, or a step pole boat, I mean, and gets you uh, further away from the city. And let me switch the scene for you. Teresa, you see her, she's kind of leaning back, looking up into the stars, and there's no, like, there's no city about you you can see everything there's no smoke in the air it's kind of it's kind of very serene from what you're used to wow is this what I've been missing my entire life <sighs> only a trip outside the city huh this is all it took yeah have you been outside of the city before? Oh, perhaps I, I remember this farm, as I said, but I do not remember any, anything like this for certain. It's incredible. Quite, quite indeed. And my little twenty is not working. <laughs> there it is. Um. The boatswain, uh, she smiles back. Ah, this is a pleasant place. And you kind of are going, and uh, a while later, you, the sun begins to come up, and you, as you're kind of coming down this river, you see these two people uh, kind of working out in the fields, and, ah, look, look, a farm. Is this your family's farm? I, I think so. She says, and she kind of stands up and waves to the farmers over there, and they don't actually, they look up and give you kind of a odd look, and the boatswain kind of banks the, the boat over here, and she says, well, this is uh, where we say goodbye for now, then. Thank you again for your help. You, you said that we would owe you a favor? Ah, yes, it is. Uh, this is less than I would have expected from someone normally paying me to take them this far, but one day I will collect it. I will, it is our way. I will find you. Do not worry. Hey. She kind of nods as she steps out of the boat. I would 
look forward to seeing you again. Um, may the gods be with you. Huh. Let them protect you. And she smiles and just waits until you disembark. I successfully disembark. Yes. And Teresa follows you and she kind of like comes over here and uh, hello, hello. And the farmers are Yes, how can we help? <laughs> Shit. I turn into <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> ah, okay. This is okay. Now, uh, how can we help you? And uh, Teresa just... Uh, I am Teresa uh, Asconti. And they look... Asconti? We no no Asconti. And they're, they're kind of going back and forth. And uh, Can you give me an awareness roll? Or perception roll, I should say? Yes. Yeah. No modifiers. No modifiers on this one, no. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, in the distance, you see something weird, like super strange, pop up. Um, it's like the swirling mist of. Oh gosh, how do? You, energy it's hard to know exactly what it is but it's uh in the distance it's like it, it almost looks like the sky except here and Teresa and the the farmers don't seem to see it yeah i look between Teresa and the farmers um pardon me but what what is that over there what do you mean and as they kind of turn around they see it and they <gasps> gasp right and um then you see someone jump out of it um and this person is like limping down this uh road and you see they're holding like their side and they have like oh it's the it's a terrible wound they're, it's like they're holding their insides in their stomach by their hands and blood is just seeping out from between their fingers and you see like uh, like their entrails trying to poke out and it he looks it's a you think it's dwarf okay you you've never actually seen one maybe, maybe you have but it looks like some a stunted person short stocky it doesn't have a beard like in dwarves normally do, and it has this weird thing on its face, like an apparatus. And it's hard to know what that exactly is. Um, but this person or you know thing is in really bad shape as it comes out of this thing. And it's, it just he just came out of nowhere. Yeah, Lysia is gonna start rushing towards them. Um, yeah, and as she kind of passes the farmers she slows down looking towards them do, do you have any bandages anything anywhere huh we'll run to the to the house come come my love and they just kind of book it out of there this they look very very scared first of all as you uh, yeah. make your way towards this person he kind of yeah, falls to his knees gonna... as you get there oi oi Oh, it's okay. it's okay. it's okay. it's okay. oh yes, I I'm hurt. I'm hurt, and it's weird. As he first starts speaking to you, it's like a totally different language, and then all of a sudden you can understand him. I yes, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, Alicia kind of rushes up, um, getting on her knees as she gets closer, um, trying to hold this person up. What what happened? Are you okay? Um, and she's going to kind of look towards his wound and just try to think of anything she can do to try to stop like the bleeding. or. Yeah, you look at it. It looks pretty bad. They're coming. They're coming, girl. Here. And he, he you see, he pushes like what looks like a button on the side of his head. And you see this apparatus like disengage from his eye um like turn out and you see that there's no eye there there's just like these you, it's, 
what is it would it look like to you um it looks like basically um some like wires uh in his in his eye socket it's totally grotesque and like the whole thing like kind of falls off the back of his head and you see like his his skull and parts of his brain exposed as this thing falls off it's like a head dress kind of it's hard to explain hard to know what it is yeah Alicia just panics um uh, sir what what can I do take it take it girl take it girl before they come she picks it up what what do I do with this just hold it and as you're holding it um what would be Lesia's favorite piece of jewelry? Or item uh, in general? Her favorite item that she, like, possesses? Yeah, or something she wants to possess. Not, she doesn't even have to have it, but she would want to possess it. Um, in her mind, what is the greatest thing that she could have that's a, a, a thing? Maybe, like... Probably, like, a nice necklace. Just something to denote, like, wealth and status. And something that makes her feel like she's made it out of what she was born into. You grab this strange apparatus and in front of your eyes, you've heard of magic before, it's not very common, but this thing in your hands turns into this necklace a brooch with a huge green emerald uh or actually a red ruby on it and it like sparkles in your hand and as you're looking down at it something else comes out of the portal um doo -doo. okay Out comes this thing you've never seen before. It's not human, it's not dwarf, it's not elf, which is mostly what you see. There are other things out there in the world that you've heard about, but you're, you've never seen one. You don't know what it is. It has in okay. its hand um, something that appears to be maybe a crossbow, um, but it doesn't really look like a crossbow, certainly. It's bigger, it's bulkier, there's no bolt. It puts it up to its shoulders, and you hear this, and this light, brilliant light, explodes from it, and it hits this dwarf in the back, and on the uh, on the front side, its chest just explodes, and blood mixes with the blood from the man you had killed earlier all over you, as this person is just killed right in front of your eyes, and... He just goes, oh, go! And he reaches forward and pushes on the ruby as he falls. And you start feeling this weird sensation of, like, lightheadedness, airiness. Just like, and you just kind of, I'm going to let you just roleplay heck on how that, how that feels to yourself. Just all this, this very strange sensation as, as if you're floating almost. Yeah, as... This ruby was pressed, and she looks around at the scene around her. Her vision begins to blur, and uh, she's feeling lightheaded. She tries to turn around towards Teresa, shouting for her to run. Um, as you, and then yeah, as you turn, happens. as you turn, and you're getting ready to tell Teresa to run, you see this brilliant light, and it actually. You kind of turn, you think it passes through you and it just slams into re into Teresa and you just see her just in a bloody mist just fly apart in many pieces and uh, suddenly you wake up in a field and with sunflowers all around you and you have no idea where you are or what happened and I'll let you Role play how that is, and we'll end this session. As consciousness comes to Licia, 
and she finds herself in this field of sunflowers. She quickly stands, searching around her. Um, she begins shouting, Teresa! Teresa! Are you okay? Where are you? Um, she looks towards the ground, trying to find the body of this dwarf or whatever they were, trying to find the the gust of stars that she saw this creature escape from, trying to find the farmers, trying to find anything familiar. And as she searches for longer and longer, it begins to dawn on her more and more that she doesn't know where she is and no one she knows is near her. She is completely and entirely alone. Um, she crumples to the ground, panting heavily. Just completely overwhelmed by what just happened and what she just saw. Yeah, as you do that, you are looking around and you kind of, the one thing that's obvious is this thing around your neck, this beautiful necklace with a red ruby in, set in the center of the brooch and uh, you kind of look down at this thing and you kind of as you look stare into the jewel you kind of see this kind of it's very hard to see but you see it um, eventually as you stare at it kind of like the swirling pattern of stars in it and as you are looking down at that uh, that's where we'll end it for tonight that's it. Nice. That was so good.